Hey everyone, how many copies of Born to Run is too many copies? Stick around and we'll dive in. Hey everyone, Bruce Springsteen is probably my favorite artist of all time. It's definitely the artist that occupies the largest space in my collection of not just vinyl, but CDs as well. I thought it'd be interesting and fun to take a look at all the different copies of Bruce Springsteen's Born to Run that I have, um, not just on vinyl, but on CD, cassette, as well as some of the additional releases uh, that are related to this that I have in my collection. So we'll take a d deeper dive right now. As always, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a future episode. Like and comment on this video to help it uh, surface up to the community in YouTube. And, and again, if you see something that is uh, missing, let me know. So now, uh, as I've been doing some of these videos, um, normally I'm just showing off like a complete discography of somebody. I am a huge uh, Bruce Springsteen collector, so if I were to show my entire collection, um, this video would probably be like six hours long. So what I decided to do was to highlight Born to Run. Born to Run, uh, probably his uh, one of his most popular albums, and it was the one that more or less saved his career after uh, uh, two, um, you know, well received critically but not well received uh, financially albums out there. And uh, it was it was his third album was going to probably get dropped by Columbia Records, and uh, it did very well. So in in the opening, I pose like you know how many. How many copies of one album is too many? And uh, and and I preface that, you know, as as a Springsteen collector, um, I I have a lot of um, versions of things. They're all a little bit different, which I think is is the key. Is is it's not to buy a ton of copies um, just to sit on of the same thing, but you know, there's little nuances here and there. So I thought I show them off. So I I have this isn't the cassette I grew up with. I uh, I don't have my original cassette collection, but I did pick up a cassette, the cassette of Born to Run a couple years ago just to have it, just for fun. So that is, uh, that is one copy. Um, I also have, oops, we'll call it just like the standard CD. Now I actually have two copies of this. Um, my other one, I'm not exactly sure where it is. I've moved a few times in the last few years, so it's packed up. But uh, the CD itself, I'm not sure where it is, but the cover is autographed by Max Weinberg. And I have that in a frame. Um, so after I got that autographed, I ended up buying another CD to just kind of keep on the shelf. And yeah, so that is, uh, that is another one. Recently, I would say in the last year or so, I got this. It's one of those gold CDs. Um, I'll be honest, I have I still haven't listened to this yet. It came and then I just I threw it on the shelf and I'm gonna get to it at some point. Just never did. But this is supposedly uh, an audiophile CD. Um, we'll see how it sounds. I'm not I'm not convinced that these sound a whole lot better. I mean, I imagine that they're maybe mastered a little bit better than uh, some notoriously bad CDs are. But yeah, that's just, uh, uh, that's really the only difference with this is that it's just on that gold and it's supposedly audio file. Um, got this box set not too long ago. Uh, I believe this was released in Europe it's uh, his albums from 1973 to 84. So naturally, if you go a few albums deep, you will find it. It's uh, supposed to be, you know, the idea was they're almost like mini record sleeves. But um, the cool thing about the original Born to Run album is it's got that gatefold. And this is just, it's just a cardboard sleeve with the CD inside. It's not a gatefold. So not quite as cool as it could be. But this box is everything up to Born to Run, and then, I mean, Born in the USA, and then a little booklet with uh, lyrics and other info in the end of that. And then, of course, was his anniversary 
box set. Um, I did get a, a cool one. This is a Best Buy exclusive, which came with a bonus CD. Um, it's a replica of the seven inch single. So the CD just has uh, Meeting Across the River and Born to Run, just like the original did. But yeah, that was just kind of a fun little throw in. And then it, of course, came with the CD remastered for the anniversary, made to look like a little record, which is kind of cool, uh, booklet, and then it had the DVDs, um, Hammersmith, Odeon London. Now this is just, as I said, just a DVD. He ultimately put this out on CD, and then uh, finally a few years ago, I think it was first a Record Store Day release, and then they finally made it a wide release, um, but they did put it out on vinyl as well. Uh, I'm not going to show that today as we keep strictly to the Born to Run album theme. Oops. But yeah, that is the anniversary box set, 30th anniversary box set. And then one more CD I'll, I'll throw. I'm not going to show off all my bootlegs today, but I just thought this was kind of a fun one. Uh, Warren Rose's The Definitive Born to Run Outtakes Collection. It's got a few songs uh, that just didn't quite make the cut. Uh, it's got like a Love So Fine, Lovers in the Cold, but it also has the uh, an alternate version of Born to Run. And then it's got uh, uh, some early versions of other songs too, including the acoustic version of Thunder Road, which has some alternate lyrics to it. So this is kind of a cool, cool boot that I thought I'd show you as well. Um, I've got a lot of uh, official live releases that he's uh, put out in the last few years um, on CD and then lots of bootlegs too of uh, concerts from the era. Um, probably do a video on some of those in the future, but yeah, I figured I'd just throw that one out for fun. Um, so let's head on now to the vinyl. So I've got this in the background. This is the uh, the album collection volume one. Um, we'll call this, I guess, maybe my, for a while, like my play copy, my newer one. It's got a nice white cover. These things had a tendency to yellow over time. But yeah, that's part of this box set, which uh, I think went up to Born in the USA. Yeah. So it's it's all of his albums replicated, starting with uh, Greetings from Asbury Park, uh, Greetings from Asbury Park, New Jersey, and then it goes up to uh, Born in the USA. So that's that's probably my newest, most modern pressing that he did I, I think around 2015 or so um, but I do have a lot of other copies as well which I'm going to show you now so first up I'm gonna show you I'm not gonna pull all these out but you can see this one this is just a pretty yellowed version of the cover um, Kind of, I, I don't remember when this one was pressed. It's probably mid seventies, late seventies. It's not a first pressing because, as, as you'll see in a minute, um, some of the info on the uh, on the bottom changes a little bit over time. They kind of condense that a bit. But I got this as part of a lot on eBay uh, years and years and years ago. I just bought up some records, probably around the year two thousand. You know, got them dirt cheap. Um, this was kind of my original play copy, and uh, definitely not the cleanest copy out there. Um, and I certainly, I've got more copies now that I, this one. If I ever play it again, I'd be shocked. All right, there's uh, three copies I'm going to show you now that are a little bit different. So when the album first came out, now I'll, I'll preface this by saying I don't have the uh, promo copy that is uh, probably the most famous of the promo copies where it's just a blank cover it's 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 the cover image of Bruce with uh, with Clarence 
on the back side, but there's no text. And the only the only thing you'll see is is it says like Bruce Springsteen, uh, Born to Run, and it's kind of in script on the on the cover. Um, you know, that's like a five thousand dollar record. I've seen it pop up every once in a while. Um, I'm I'm not about <laughs> to drop that kind of coin on that, but uh, this is an early version. Um, as you can see at the bottom, there's a little bit more information on there. Um, but John Landau's name is spelled incorrectly. Uh, his name is J-O-N, and this is spelled J-O-H-N. So this is an early jacket that kind of slipped through. Um, I'm going to take this one out because it is also a, uh, a UK pressing. You can see that by the CBS label. It's really clean. Uh, there's some scuff marks, a little bit of a scratch there. I can't remember if I played this one through or not. I only got this in maybe the last year or so. But yeah, this is this is an early version. And then the next two, kind of a similar theme. You can see here, there's a sticker at the bottom. Um, now, I don't know if the sticker was applied this way or if somebody moved it, but based on the ring wear, it looks like it's been here forever, but you can see above it, John Landau's name is spelled incorrectly, and then below it, the sticker, it's a little tough to see, but it corrects the spelling to J-O-N. And this is an American pressing, as you can see by the uh, red Columbia label. And then the other version of this that I have, it's basically the same other than the, uh, the label is a little bit better and it covers over the, uh, the original incorrect name. And then of course I already showed you that early play copy that I got um, that has, um, has his name spelled correctly. Um, I have one more very early uh, this is a promo copy as well, and, and actually his name, John's name, is spelled uh, correctly in this one. They finally corrected the cover there. Um, but this is a, uh, it's a radio promo. You can see the cutout on the top, and then the timing strip on the bottom for the radio with uh, the information. A little bit of a cover damage there, but but the, the record itself is is very clean. This did not get... Um, this must not have been played a ton um, and it is a white label pro promo as well I mean this this thing sounds really good it's it's a really nice copy um, if you can get yourself a, uh, a white label promo of Born to Run I do highly recommend it alright up next we have the Half Speed um, Master uh, this is the CBS Master Sound Audiophile Pressing Series. They did two of these for Bruce. Um, this one and Darkness on the Edge of Town. It's still in a really nice uh, original jacket that it came in. I'm not going to take it out. Um, it sounds good. I, this is a nice one. Uh, I, I think it came out in the late 70s. Um, 1980, actually. 1980. Um, it's it's not you know they they're billing it as audiophile. It's not. It it's a little bit hot. I want to say it's been a while since I listened to it. Uh, it was definitely an upgrade from the ones that I had. But then you know when I got that radio promo that that sounds way better than this. I, I would take that over this. And then the other one that I would actually take over this is this uh, Japanese pressing. Uh, it, this one is, uh, I want to say early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, Japanese pressing with the OB up top. It's a, kind of a pain in the butt to take this in and out, um, but this sounds phenomenal. 
I got a whole bunch of uh, Japanese pressings from Bruce in the last year and a half or so, two years. Um, and this sounds uh, this sounds great. And and I would I would probably of the ones I've shown you so far would probably list this one one the radio promo two, and then probably that half speed master three. But those don't win uh, if we're doing a shootout. The shootout victory would go to this. Um, this is a Classic Records audiophile pressing, I believe from 2005. Now, Classic Records, uh, similar to uh, the Mobile Fidelity original master recordings it is just a high high quality audiophile pressing um 180 grams actually this is probably i think 200 grams um 200 gram classic records it's on that quiet super vinyl uh i was able i, I bought the sealed uh, this, this video is being filmed in uh, May of uh, 2022. I bought this in January of 2022. Um, it is just gorgeous. I mean, this is one where you you sit back and pour yourself a you know a little bourbon, a little whiskey, and just kind of kick back and relax. And it, it, it's just. It's just beautiful. The, the tip-on jacket um, is is amazing, and you know it's just a really nice, just a really nice record overall. Uh, so if you can get your hands on one of these, I, I do highly recommend it. This is by far the best Born to Run pressing out there. Now, Classic Records went out of business. Uh, everything was sold few years ago to uh, analog productions so they presumably analog pr productions presumably has uh, the plates for these um, I believe this is cut by Bernie Grudman but they, they have not re-released it I don't know you know if, if they, they probably would need permission to re-release it from from the label from Sony, uh, but but audio but Analog Productions presumably still has the uh, the plates for these the metalwork and and could repress it if they wanted to, assuming that um, they they have the rights to do it. So yeah, I mean you know I, I think I showed you sixteen copies of uh, Born to Run. I think that might be my count or or thereabouts. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, how many copies is too many? I, I don't know what the answer is to that. Um, but, you know, these these are all a little bit different. There's something a little bit different. There's a CD, there's there's box sets, um, obviously cassettes. You know, it, it's a little bit of everything, even a bootleg, which is fun to, to listen to. Um, so a little bit different and uh, just thought I'd share that with you today. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, do you have a certain artist or an album that you just have a, a absolute bananas number of uh, copies out there? Uh, let me know and uh, we'll be back with more videos soon. Take care.